Oh, this is a hot topic. Love letters, love letters. There are people that do everything from sending a nice letter to putting a box together with all kinds of gifts to making videos, to all kinds of things, knocking on the door. The purpose of a love letter is to entice the seller to sell the property to the buyer based on factors that have nothing to do with the purchase and sale agreement and the financing. Again, a purpose of a love letter is to entice the seller to sell the property to a buyer on factors that have nothing to do with the purchase and sale agreement and the financing. So the seller is, it does not have the right to choose a buyer based on any of those factors that have to do with fair housing. The seller can't be choosing a buyer based on a protected class, based on something about them. The seller can really only choose an offer based on the purchase and sale agreement. Our freedoms in the country, they're great, but you are limited when you sell your house. So the purchaser writes this letter and thinks, okay, well, this will kind of help me, you know, get my offer accepted. Here's a couple of examples. A guy makes an offer on a property, a single guy, and he wants to buy this house because it's within commuting distance to work and he's kind of thinking about the future. So he wrote in his letter about, about these issues and that he's dedicated to work and the sellers told their agent they did not want to sell to him, that they preferred to sell to a family. It was a lower offer because they felt that that house was perfect for bringing up their kids and it would be great for another family. No. You can't discriminate. You can't discriminate against a single guy. Everybody is protected under fair housing laws. Oh, here's another one. Two women who exchanged vows in a same-sex marriage in Washington state. They identified themselves as taking title as a married couple. Their letter included photos of their wedding. They lost out on the last, um, the last house that they made an offer on because the sellers did not believe in same-sex marriage, but they thought this would probably help with this house. But that would be discrimination, that you can't be chosen or discriminated against or for because of your, um, your letter if you're LGBTQ. Or a proud immigrant has an accent and he's, uh, his name is often mispronounced. The letter emphasized the love of their house and the neighborhood and the sellers would not sell to him because they did not want to change their neighborhood because he was an immigrant. That is clear discrimination. You just can't discriminate. So um, if a seller um, wants to discriminate and chooses to discriminate and you're sitting there representing them, you're right in the same boat with them. You just splash the water. You're in the same boat. And you're, you have to obey the laws that say that there's no discrimination in this transaction. And if you're a buyer's agent, you shouldn't be writing or encouraging or helping or delivering a letter, according to the Realtor Association, who today, the day I'm filming this, um, just put out another um, article about this exact issue. If you're the buyer, it's not a good idea to be doing that because you're putting somebody in a situation, the seller, that they could be in a legal battle. The, the article, one of the articles on the Realtor Association says love letter or liability letter. Keep that in mind. If you look at it this way, why do we not write love letters for every single buyer? Hmm. Did you write a love letter for every single buyer you've had for the last three years? I mean, have you written a letter? Have you helped them write a letter? Did you present a letter? Did you sit at a listing present at a sale presentation as a representative of the seller and show the letters and discuss the letters and the people? You didn't do that for everybody. If that was the case, then we would be writing love letters from people from all different backgrounds. But typically, a lot of the love letters are not from people from all different backgrounds. Typically, not everybody's writing them. Why? Think about why they're not. And is it legal to just write, treat one party different than another party? So why didn't you treat them all the same? But when you're looking at the fact that there is a federal law that you can't discriminate. Now, how about this one? Somebody writes a perfect love letter. Oh, just, a, they got the greatest family. I mean, have you ever seen a family that isn't perfect? I mean, they send out those Christmas cards or, or Valentine's notes or whatever, things about the kids' school, and they're just the perfect family, just perfect family. There's no such thing. 
There's like no such thing as a perfect family. How do you know that the letter with the perfect family doesn't have like a dad or a mom who could be a, a sex offender that has to register? You don't know that. Maybe that's the reason they're moving. Maybe they just did could, you know, had enough with their neighborhood because they're registered sex offenders. Maybe their kid is always in trouble with the police for breaking into houses during the day instead of going to school. I mean, you don't know what that the perfect family really looks like, and you don't know if that letter is really, really a perfect family. So somebody could be choosing that letter based on something that somebody writes. There's no law that says it has to even be truthful. Well, how about this one? Okay, so you got this... In this case, it was a seller who had an older house on a large piece of land. It, it probably was about four or five acres. And so a guy walks in and he hears her talking to a potential prospect and says, I really want to sell to a family. I want somebody to, to really appreciate all this land and the woods back there. That is my goal. That's what I really want. He listens to this. He goes home. He grabs the wife. They write a love letter, a beautiful love letter with pictures of their kids and everything. They go, they get their agent, they pre the agent presents the offer. This is fabulous. So the seller, it's, the, it's not the highest offer. It's a lower offer. And the seller accept that, accepts that offer based on the fact that a family's going to move in. And it's not going to be demolished and turned into a townhouse development. Which it was. A month later, that house was just raised. It was gone. And the seller was all upset, but, you know... Love letters do not have to be true. So that's another thing. Why would we assume that they're true? I don't know if you've ever been on a dating site, but I think half those profiles, maybe 80%, are all fake. There's nothing that says we have to be true anymore. So, you know, always think about that when somebody brings up the love letter. You can say to the seller, what makes you think that it would be true? So it's also against the law to discuss the background of the buyers. You can't, like a seller says, what are they like? You're not allowed to tell them. You don't know. You have no idea. It's a best practice to choose the paper and not the people. The paper and not the people. The purchase and sale agreement and the financial terms and not the people. You don't have control about who's going to live there and what they're going to do with that property after you move out. So that's the best practice.